Hey everyone, welcome to the Math 6 1.2 video. Today we're talking about powers and exponents. Alright, so, got a little thing here. Let's talk about this. Got a big 3 and a little 4. What is that? Well, the whole thing is what we call a power, okay? Big 3, little 4 is called the power. Well, what's the big 3 referred to as? The base, okay? It's the big part there is the base holding up the little part called the exponent, okay? The whole thing is called a power. Now we can translate that into words, take these powers and put them in words. So, big three, little two, what is that called? Well, we always start with a base, which is a three, and we say three squared or to the second. Okay, some people say to the second power. So three squared or three to the second or three to the second power. So there's really three ways you can say it there. Um, now, squared is a little unique, uh, has to do with the two, and we're not going to have that going forth unless it's a two. For example, this one here, I don't know if you can maybe guess, but I'd say it's 5 to the 4th probably. Yeah, 5 to the 4th power, okay? Always start with a base, and then the power, uh, um, the uh, the exponent here is going to tell you what, the, what, the, what comes after. So 5 to the 4th, or 5 to the 4th power. All right, so let's write some expressions as powers, okay? So I've given us the expression 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And we remember that the little dot means multiply, right? Now I put the x down here just for a separate example, but here I put the dot. This is really what I'm going to be using commonly and what you guys need to get used to using. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. What does that mean? That actually means a base of 4. Why? Because that's the number that's repeated down here to the... Sixth power. Why sixth? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six times that the number four is multiplied. So you can probably guess what this one is. Eight times eight times eight is eight to the third. Easy as that. I know you guys can do this. All right, so let's find some values of power. So we've got seven squared. Okay, so now we're going to work backwards. What does seven squared or seven to the second mean? Well, in terms of repeated multiplication, it means 7 times 7. Well, what is 7 times 7? 49. Okay, so 7 squared or 7 to the second is 49. How about 4 cubed or 4 to the third power? So 3 is another unique one we could say cubed. Why is that? Because to find the volume of a cube, you have length times width times height, but you don't need to worry about that terribly much right now. Just know that the 3 can be said to be cubed, okay? Um, so let's think about 4 to the third. So I think it's 4 times 4 times 4. Okay. Well, how do I do that? Well, remember, work from left to right. It's all multiplication, so we could do those ones first if we want, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4. And what is 16 times 4? Well, 16 times 2 is 32, and 32 times 2 is 64. So 4 to the third is what? 64. All right, hopefully you're getting a handle on this. Now we're going to talk about identifying perfect squares, okay? So what I mean is literally a square versus something that is not square or a rectangle, okay? So the critical question in identifying what we call perfect squares is, could a square have an area of blank? Fill in the blank. What do I mean by that? You'll see. Okay, so is 20... The number 20, a perfect square. Well, again, the critical question here when it comes to perfect squares, could a square have an area of 20? Hmm. Well, let's think about it. Uh, area of 20. Area is length times width, right? So I had a square. Okay. So, oh, I know. I could do 4 times 5, right? 4, a length of 4 and a width of 5 is 20. 4 times 5. The problem is, that's not a what? It's not a square. Why? Because if this side is 4 and that's 5, that's actually a rectangle. It's not a square. Uh, uh, and we're talking really right now only in whole numbers. So, um, mm, uh, well, what about 5? Five? 5 times 5. Oh, I know. A square has the same sides, right? So, that doesn't look perfect, but that's okay. Put little lines there. It means all sides are the same. So, if that's 5, that means it's also 5 and 5 and 5. I don't even need those other three fives because the little individual tick marks tell me that they're all 5 anyway. But... Okay, so what would the area of that square be? Well, 5 and 5, 10, oh, it's 25. It's not what I need it to be. 20 there. Hmm, so, hmm, can I have, oh, no. Okay, 20 is not a perfect square. 
There's no uh, side out there that you can say, well, I'm going to make that side into 4. Okay, well, 4 times 4 is 16. Or maybe if you even did, like, well, how about each side of the square be 4.2? Well, the problem is 4.2 times 4.2 is 17.64. Okay, so you actually can't make a perfect square out of 20. Therefore, 20 is not a perfect square. What about 25? Okay, so let's see, could I make a square that has an area of 25? So that 25, we're just putting in the blank right there, okay? Well, let's see, square, that's a terrible square. Let's redo that. There, using the tools I've been given. Well, could I make an area of 25? Yeah, actually I could, because if that side is 5, and that side is 5, and we know that area is equal to length times width, and the length is 5, and the width is 5, well then guess what our area is? 25, and we would say units squared right there is our label, but uh, that's not really our final answer, because really our answer is, could a square have an area of 25? Yeah, so is 25 a perfect square? Yes. All right, the last little thing you're gonna to need to do is pause the video, do these three problems right here, put your answers in your notes, along with the questions, of course, because you always rewrite the questions, and then uh, come to class ready to talk about your answers. Who knows? I mean, there could almost, there could even be like a pop quiz or something like that. Uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, yeah, have fun with that, and I will see you guys in class.